welcome to Gate TV. I'm really pleased to bring you a second series of Unlocking the Gate. And there was only really one person to kickstart this second series with, and that is manager Jay Saunders. Jay, I think the first question from fans' points of view is going to be, how have you been keeping? How is lockdown treating you since we last spoke in back in November? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been OK. It's, I think there's, I think like everyone you speak to, uh, you have your ups and downs and, and stuff. And there's no doubt, I think I've found it, tough being indoors a lot more than what I'm used to obviously being at football and and, and work and stuff and, and yeah so that, that's been difficult but um, I think your family and that and, and keep you sort of keep it together and, and you just got to keep pushing through and hopefully now with all the announcements we've got a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. And I did mention obviously we spoke in November and we were sort of imagining the situation would be a couple of weeks without football and the challenges that would present. Did you ever imagine we would be in a situation at the end of February where we had another season null, well, technically null and void? Um, I did it. Well, I hoped, I hoped it wouldn't be the case, but obviously um, it didn't turn out that way. And, and I think, if, if I'm being honest, I'm sure we'll go into that a bit more in a bit, but I, I think it's been the right decision um, with everything that's gone on in the world. And, and quite simply for me, the fact that we didn't have testing at our level regardless of everything else, not having fans in, to not have testing, I just think for players' safety and stuff, it, it wasn't right. And um, obviously I, I had the virus myself and I've lost a uh, family member through it. So it's it's been one of those where you think, for me, it was a no-brainer. I'm really sorry to hear that. And I think, like you say, the health and welfare of players is the most important thing. And I suppose really just having the opportunity to talk to you about the situation as a whole, because it's affected the whole pyramid. And I think the decision that came out of the National League South and North gave us a pretty good idea. It would have been a bit strange for the Ishmael League to continue. What's been your overall opinion on the way the situation has been dealt with? Um, I don't know if I've got to be careful with what I say. <laughs> uh, it's been a bit of a shambles, to be honest. I, I Like you're saying, with the, with the South and the North, folding part of me feels they were just waiting on them to make a decision because then it makes the Ishmael Leeds decision a lot easier um because obviously you can't relegate and promote it just it kind of makes their mind up um but let's be honest once it was null and void last season then stuff should have been put in place that if there is a second wave ABC this is what we're going to do everyone's clear with it no one can argue and say well we should do this we should do that but they didn't so I think kind of the league made a run for its own back and um it's been difficult from a club's point of view. I know speaking to the club, it's, it's difficult to plan anything. Um, it's impossible for players. And then then, then there was rumours that, oh, we might come back. And you're thinking, well, we haven't, we haven't played for like that since I think it was October, was it, our last game, yeah. something like that? Yeah. Um, how you expect players to just come back and then cram in three or four games a week. So it was all ridiculous. And if they'd have made that decision earlier and just, like I say, back of last season, null and void, um, then, then I think everyone's clear and it'd been it'd been straightforward, but they haven't. Um, and the and the worst thing is not being kept in contact. Really, you get the odd email from the league just saying um, we're waiting on updates, and, and surely they've had enough time to plan. And and it doesn't take an expert to work out that with the amount of games left to play, that it, it wasn't going to happen. So it could have been made a lot easier and uh, and quicker. And in terms of moving ahead and moving forwards, there's talk with some of the national league south that they might look to play some competitive football. Do you think there's any sort of merit in maybe looking to do something from the summer's point of view or is it really probably just a case of, look, let's just actually start the season properly come August and complete a campaign? Because that's the crazy thing now, two two seasons of, of football with no promotion or relegation. Uh, me personally, I think it should just be left now, start the fresh the season once the virus, I mean, the vaccine, the way things is being rolled out. Hopefully by by sort of the start of the new season, I think the majority of the country will be will be vaccinated, um, and then we've got no chance of. Well, obviously, you don't know for definite, but you'd like to think there's no chance of something happening again. Um, I think if you go through, I've, I've even I've had a couple of texts already saying, "Do we fancy a friendly in a couple of weeks' time?" Once once sort of grassroots is allowed to do uh, allowed to start again, I just feel that until the vaccination is completely rolled out, then you're always risking. Uh, spreading and stuff and so for me I just feel that it should be put on hold um, it gives non-league clubs a real chance now to plan going forward budget wise and, and what they've lost and sponsors and everything I just think it gives them a real good 
chance now to plan. It's not ideal. We all want to be involved in football. We want to be playing football. But for the sake of an extra few months, I just feel that it would be best to go that route. But we'll see. You might see me having a friendly a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think, I think we're all missing it. That's, that's yeah, the thing, isn't it? That's, that's where it's tough. In your head, you, you sort of think, no, look, let's just, just or say in your heart, shall I say, you, you kind of just want to have a game and see the boys and, and do that. But um, you have to remember now as well, from a player's point of view, players aren't contracted now. Um, I'm sure most clubs will have, have told their players that they're not really attached to the club uh, to, to, a, to a degree. So it makes things like that. There's players risk getting injuries for the sake of friendlies. Um, it's, a, it's a real tough one, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. And one of the things, I guess, you know, with every negative, there are potentially a few positives. And given all of your experience in this level of management and higher above, there has been a a few people saying, use this as an opportunity to sort of restructure the pyramid. I think a lot of people found it a bit odd that the National League and the likes of Bromley and Dover are carrying on the north and south, isn't it? It's almost like now there's perhaps an opportunity to regionalise the pyramid what what are your thoughts on that? Do you think actually it's time to take a look at look at the pyramid? Possibly. I, I, I'm a little bit old school. I, I, in, I don't like too much change. If, if I'm being honest with you, I think um, yeah, you can regionalise. Mm-hmm. But having been involved in that that national league, it's great going to a lot of the sort of teams up north and the big stadiums, and that was all part of it. Um, if you go into the football league, which if you're at national level, you're, you're trying to aim for that it's not regionalised. So where do you stop with it? Um, I do feel that last season when they made this elite status, um, I found that ridiculous, if I'm honest with you. And to see that the Conference South was allowed to carry on. Um, and let's be honest, was I couldn't see it finishing and the way things were going. But it, it just made a mockery of our level because you're almost saying, well, your level's not really worth anything. You're not you're not important. Um, and their elite status, yet they weren't being tested. So what I don't really get, it, it was all a bit crazy. So um, it, it needs looking at, definitely all needs looking at. But as I say, I'm a little bit old school, like too much change, but I understand why people would want it regionalised, especially with the amount of money that uh, teams have probably lost this season um, and things like that. So I, I get both sides of it, but... Um, I just feel the people in charge are, if, unless you get a, a new sort of, a new people involved with the system and the setup, I don't think there'll be that much change because I don't think the, the, the current regime in most of the leagues like too much change. Yeah, I think as well, what it's really, really exposed is the importance of sustainability on and off the pitch. And as a manager, obviously you're really, really focused on the stuff on the pitch, but I guess for managers moving forward, not just yourself, there is going to be that element now of kind of future proofing to just get through the next few years for clubs to find their feet again. And I guess an opportunity as well when supporters are allowed back in, I think a lot of us now look to local, um, you know, there's a lot about supporting your local businesses. Do you think there's an opportunity maybe for Margate to sort of hit the ground running when football does return? I really hope so. I think, I mean, we all know in the past that the crowds that Margate can attract. Um, we've had a few years where things haven't gone great. So you, you like to think now that it's a fresh start almost for clubs. Um, and certainly, like you say, with local businesses, local clubs, I think that people are so bored with being in. You'll, you'll see a lot of people go, well, actually, let's, let's, let's get out of the house and, and go and try something new. So fingers crossed on that route. Um, clubs, club. It, it will give the clubs boost and a uh, boost, and, and the, the extra income will be, be much needed. So, hopefully, it's something we can do. Um, and, and like I say, more, most clubs will will hope that way. Um, there's certainly, I think, certain clubs will be affected more than others. Um, you got, I do feel for the club 50 50. I feel for some of the clubs that have really gone big and spent a lot of money to get promoted the last two seasons, it's not quite worked out for them because of obviously what's gone on. Um, but every club's been affected in different ways. Uh, I think for Margate, it can be, it's hard to say a positive thing, but we've got to look to, to the future and try and be positive with it. And I'm sure the club are doing that. When I speak to them, um, they're already speaking to sponsors and things like that to try and really, like you say, hit the ground running when we come back. And then on the football side of that, that's up to, to myself and the management team to get a um, to get a squad playing and uh, attractive football that we can start getting those fans. And once they do come in to have a watch, they stay. And it's, it's a hard question to pose because I know that you're a football person, I'm a football person, we're all missing it. But 
was there a sense of relief when actually a decision was made because then you and your management team can at least know what the future is going to be you can obviously speak to the players and I've got a few kind of interviews lined up with with the boys um and obviously they're all missing it and to a certain degree I know in the wider scheme of things this might seem a bit of a silly thing to say but I feel a certain sympathy for them because obviously they're just missing out on playing time so is that something you've been quite wary of to try and kind of keep their spirits up during this yeah it's it's been difficult because and and you're right where we've had no updates um it's really difficult because you can find yourself having the same conversations with the same players and you're almost saying you know as much as me really um like I say I do feel for them because we've got a lot of young players that um that want to kick on in the game and some of the older ones, the likes of, I don't mean, I remember Reese Prestige, your, your Liam Friends, the, your older players, they want to get as many games in as they can because sooner or later they have to, they'll stop. And uh, so I see both sides of it. But it's, that's what's been the most difficult because I think, like I say, if the league has said this is the situation, blah, 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 it gives you something to go back and, and be positive with the players. But you almost feel like you're just kind of the bearer of bad news all the time when they, when they ring or I call them and you're just like, I'm really sorry, there's no... No news. Obviously, we had a few players that signed for Conference South Clubs. Um, Reese Prestige was was involved at Braintree. Uh, Archie Burnett and John Afua just signed for Tunbridge on Jewel Reg. Uh, Norman Wabo was at Concord. So there was a few players that were starting to sign for Conference South to get some game time. And then that got stopped. So I do feel for them. Um, we've had some... Archie's had some good news this week. Um, he, he's been invited to go and train with a championship club. So he's going... Yeah, he's going in from Monday and should be good. Uh, good experience, whether he gets out or not, it's a different matter, but it'd be a good experience for him. So I think things like that, you've got to look at the positive, but it has been tough. I think players, but also management, like I speak to obviously Ollers and, and Coyle all the time and, and, and we're kind of always, even us, it's it's hard not to. I've managed to get and get, see a couple of games um, at Conference South level and that was nice to have that little bit of normality. Um and, and yeah, so it's been tough. And I do feel for the players, but hopefully, like I say, once now we know it's null and void and we've, I think we've been given a start date for the new season, uh, we can start to plan. I'll have a meeting with the club um, shortly and we can sit down and I'll, I'm sure we'll discuss budgets and things and we can start moving forward. That is really good news about Archie as well. And I know for you, you're, you're really passionate about developing younger players. You've got an eye for recruiting them. And although, you know, you can't really look at the season and pick up too many positives because we never got to play as many games. But that's that's a really good piece of news for the club, for what you're trying to build. And I guess, again, when you look at these circumstances for football clubs, to know that you've got a good youth structure and to also know that you can provide opportunities for first team experience for these young players to progress. That's, that's a real selling point. Yeah. Yeah. No, we've, we've, it was good last season. I mean, if you're going to take positives out of last season and it was tough, we had some, I mean, there was a lot of tight games and we weren't, we didn't finish in a great league position at sort of when the season was stopped. Um, but if you're looking at Archie Burnett was 17, he came in, he was playing every week. We had George Wilkinson, George Lamb, uh, Charlie Hatton, they're all sort of 16, 17, and they was all getting run outs around the first team. And um, uh, Plus, there was a couple of academy lads that were pushing as well. So it's, it's a real, that side of it, you've got to look at the positives. And I think that was a, a massive thing. Them lads, I know they only got a little bit of experience, but they'll benefit massively from that. Um, someone like Archie, obviously, he was being watched and it shows that he was doing well. And It's opportunities for players, and that's what that's what we sort of tried to do. Um, we had to go that route, budgets and things mean that you have to involve some of the younger lads. And I, I said at the start of the first, when, when the last season was null and void, one of the things I did say in a couple of interviews was that I feel if you're a young player coming through now, it's a great opportunity for you because of clubs' uh, budgets being affected. There's probably lads that get given opportunities that maybe two, three years ago wouldn't have at that age. So, um, it, no, it, it's something that was a, a real positive to come out of it. And those lads will uh, have got a good good chance I'm sure of pushing on and making more appearances for the first team in the future and I know that you know you've gone through many things in your managerial career so far but I think from now until July it's going to be a bit of an open playing field isn't it in terms of attracting players those kind of negotiations it's a bit of an open field do you think that next season will probably be one of the most competitive it's kind of almost a bit of a leveler the past couple of years yeah I think what you'll have you'll you'll there'll be the odd I think there'll be two or three clubs that look at it and go, we're going to spend and basically have our pick of the players because I think you'll find a lot of clubs are going to be on even playing field and pretty much 
be in a position where it'll be a case of that's what we can offer you, take it or leave it, not really negotiating because I think the clubs are going to be that tight with things. Um, but like I say, you'll get the odd club that will will throw some money at and think, right, we've got to get out of this league now. And, and I think that's what you'll find across the board. Um, but then I think after that, yeah, it'll be quite an even playing field. Playing-wise, I, I probably feel that, and I might be wrong and players might disagree with me, but I think probably it's spanning the club's, club's favour a little bit when it comes to signing players. Um, and I mean that with regards to players, especially last couple of years, there's been a lot of money flowing about non-league mm-hmm. football again and they can kind of try and demand what they want and people are willing to pay it. I feel now that maybe it's given clubs excuses to go, would well, you know what? we haven't got that money now, so take it or leave it. And so that, in, in that sense, I'm sure there'll be a lot more players floating about. And then it's it's a case of getting the right players, the right group together. Um, but we'll see. It, I just feel that um, for us as a club now, we, we we can get together and go, OK, season's ended. This is when we're starting back. What's, what's the plan moving forward? Obviously, we've got the ground developments going on. I know that's pushing along. Um, so there's loads of positives that we've got to look at um, and, and try and put them towards players. Um, if we can get some good news with the ground, that would be a massive advantage for trying to sign players and attracting them to down to Margate. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it will be an interesting season, that's for sure. And we've just got to get a side that's, that's really competitive and uh, hopefully have a, have a good season when it all starts. Yeah, definitely. Even you saying that, I'm like, oh, I'm so excited to get back down to Hearts Down Park. And has there been moments where... Amongst, I mean, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? About three months now of no football where you thought, do you know what? I will take a rainy, windy, velocity trophy game or something just to be back managing on the sidelines. Do you think it's something that we will just all treasure a lot more when it does return? Yeah, I, I think that's like any way at Walk of Life, though, isn't it? At the moment, you you, you miss the silly things. Um, and, and it is crazy, I, I, the amount of things I've said to, to people. And I said, I just miss doing this or that. And yeah, football's football's been, well, ever since I remember, I've been doing it. So uh, to not be there on a Saturday or a Tuesday night is, has been really tough, as I'm sure it has for everyone. But um, listen, it, it's, been a, it's been a situation that everyone in the country, I always look and think there's always people a lot worse off than than ourselves or, or yourself. So you kind of have to look at it and look at it that way. So yeah, I've missed it massively. Um, but I try and spin it on the positive and go, well, actually I've been able to spend more Saturdays with the kids or do things that maybe I wouldn't have been able to do if football's there. So to a certain degree, I've kind of gone, okay, that's how I deal with it. Try and switch mm-hmm. my attention to other things. But certainly I can't wait for that sort of first game to be back involved and, and even see, I can't even say it, people like Noel Layton and just... <laughs> Just, just, well, it's just, to be, <laughs> just to be in the dressing room with all the, the players. Like, I know as a manager, you miss you're not quite as involved in the, the 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 jokes and that as much as what you were as a player. But I've spent the past I don't know thirty years or whatever being in a changing room. So to suddenly not have that on a Saturday has, has been a big miss. But mm-hmm. um, like I say, you just just try and stay positive and know that sooner and fingers crossed it is sooner that we'll, we'll be back around that environment. Absolutely. I think that um, lots of people will agree with that. And I know that obviously you've had the break, but you have been able to get out and, and do a bit of scouting and go and watch some, I mean, when the National League South was going on. And was that quite nice just to be sort of watching games again? Yeah, obviously we're in a fortunate position as managers. You, you're kind of allowed into some other games. So to be honest, I, I tried to have a little break from it at the start. I just thought I watched a few games online, but then to actually go out and um to get to get in the ground and, and watch a game was really good, um, and it just like I said, it just felt a bit of normality, just just to be out and the fresh air of an evening and, and watching games and seeing players that you know and stuff, and obviously spotting ones that you're not so sure on and stuff. So yeah, it was really good to to see the difference in level as well from obviously the level we we're at. So um, it gives you an idea where you're sort of trying to aim towards and, and what you think you need to improve on. So yeah, it was um, it was good, but it doesn't doesn't sort of replace being actually involved so um but yeah it was it was a nice bit of normality yeah definitely and I guess my final thing Jay is is there any final words that you would like to say in this interview to supporters because obviously your relationship with them is incredibly special and there there's lots of us at the moment sort of struggling missing hearts down park is there anything you kind of like to say to them before we wrap up Uh, just just to um it's a tough one. I, I think it's just that, that we're, we're hopefully seeing them very soon and um, 
when we do try and come along, I know obviously people are sceptical because of, of, of sort of Corona and everything, but yeah, just to just to come along, get behind and and know that I think from my point of view, we I'll be trying to assemble a squad and uh, of players that will give their all for the shirt and and hopefully next season we'll, we'll push on and and give them some entertainment and something to cheer about because I think it's been a few years of of sort of. Um, sort of downers really hasn't it it's sort of with everything that's gone on so hopefully yeah next next uh, season we can really get a squad, squad together they'll be proud of and uh, and um, give them something to cheer and that, that's my fault I just hope they'll stay safe and they've got through it and know that yeah we're, we're nearly back nearly yeah ever so nearly um just I oh, can't wait I really can't and I think, uh, like I said I never thought I would miss like getting bashed about by the wind at Hartdown yeah, yeah. Park and stuff like that. But um, no, it's... You're missing, you're missing the scaffolding, aren't you? I mean, <laughs> just got to hope it's all still intact, ready for me to go back. But um, yeah. no, it's, um, it's. I think, from all of our point of view, we, we appreciate that football is more than just that kind of three o'clock on a Saturday, like you mentioned there, being in and around the dressing room, seeing, you know, familiar faces, even missing Noel Layton. I think that's got to be my... Uh... You cut that there. That <laughs> <laughs> the quote of the interview but um jay thank you so much i know that supporters will really um appreciate hearing this update from you and yeah i guess on behalf of them as well to you keep safe and i'm sure we'll do another one of these in a couple of months when yeah we can update and and see what's going on in the crazy world no of problem football. Thank you. All right, and thank you for tuning in to Gate TV. You can subscribe to the channel so you are the first to know when our latest episodes drop. But until next time, take good care and keep safe.